Hi, and uh, I am in New York City today, and I'm very, very privileged to be sitting with the CEO of Hasablad, Perry Osting. And um, it's been a long time since Loomless Landscape has had an opportunity to sit down with Hasablad, uh, discuss the industry with Hasablad, and I'm hoping and actually truly believe that today will be the first of hopefully a number of conversations that we have throughout the, the next year as we talk about, number one, the history of Hasselblad and the present state of affairs with medium format in the photography industry and have an opportunity to kind of start looking forward a little bit and hopefully as we continue through the year, uh, we'll have the opportunity to sit down and talk about even some uh, uh, newer things that will come along. Perry has been the CEO with Hasselblad since just about a year ago, January last year, correct? Absolutely. And um, Hasselblad's kind of been quiet uh, for a little while. And hopefully Perry can tell us a little bit about where Hasselblad's been, why it's sort of been quiet, and you know, where things are going, and uh, I look forward to this conversation. I have a few little questions for you along the way, but tell us a little bit about where Hasselblad is now and uh, you know, where you was when you came in and what's happening. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me, Kevin, and uh, it's good to be here. Uh, yeah, a lot of things happened. So um, before I joined Hasselblad, I was uh, shortly in the supervisory board of Hasselblad. And uh, for me, it was, uh, of course, a new experience to be in the supervisory board and especially being in a new category for me. Uh, but when the board asked me in uh, November 2014 to join as the CEO, I grabbed this opportunity with both hands because it is a, it's a great brand, it's a great story, it's a great iconacy and a great legitimacy, I would say, to look into the future. The start was, uh, was not easy. Uh, in January 2015, uh, it was uh, not an easy period, I uh, have to admit to that. Uh, but uh, what do you do in those kind of circumstances? First of all, of course, is people. I mean, people are key. Uh, we were kind of, I would say, scattered in terms of where people were working. So we had kind of a hub in London, we had kind of a hub in Denmark. We had our production manufacturing part of the R&D in Göteborg. Uh, there used to be an Italian design studio that was already closed. But what was the first important were for me the people and, 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 and work on the organization. Uh, and uh, we put everything back in Göteborg. So that was one of the first steps. Centralized. It. Centralized. Uh, that's the root, that's the core, that's where Hasselblad started. That's where we have the expertise. And uh, that expertise had to be uh, added, so uh, we set up a complete new management team. And uh, we put all our efforts and money uh, into R&D, because, I mean, that will be your future. So this was one of the first actions that we've done. Uh, the second element was, of course, to align everybody. So what is the strategy? Which are the direction we're going to go? One thing is motivation, but I believe people are motivated and dedicated and passionate if we have one common goal. So we put a lot of effort in a three-year plan uh, uh, together with a management team. So it was certainly not done in isolation. And an extended management team, we were about 20 to 25 people. And that uh, strategy was communicated to every employee in the company. Every employee has the direction of the company and I believe very well embraced. So that was part of the organizational readiness and a strategic readiness. Then of course was also operational readiness. Operational readiness was working on supply chain, working on production, working on sourcing and of course working on the roadmap. Uh, that's why we also been a bit more quiet because we've been actually more focused on that what we had to do and that was our homework. And the third thing what was key was the financial readiness. Uh, because we can have dreams, we can say, well, we're going to change the world, we're going to have a great roadmap, but it was also, of course, how we're going to pay for it. And uh, what we have aligned first is to uh, the non-strategic assets, you know, to have that as a divestment. But moreover, as you know, we had the minority investor in addition and that happened in October, the signing happened in October, of course the process started in the summer and that was signed with DGI as a minority investor in, uh, in uh, October 2015. A lot of people are curious about that, let's come back to yeah. that a little bit. <laughs> so there's a lot of happened, so that was actually 
preparing a foundation for sustainable growth. And that's what we've been focused on. And that's probably we've been a bit quiet. Good. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, there's been so much with Hasselblad in the past. <clears throat> and I want to clear the air right off the bat. Um, Hasselblad has a, a great legend and legacy in, in the photography industry. And over the last few years, um, under your previous management, there was a lot of rebranding and uh, kind of binging out of some third party, specifically Sony cameras. Um, is, this a, is this still there or is, where, where do we stand with that at this point? Yeah. Well, let me first go back. Uh, okay. I think at the time that that decision and that strategy was done, I wouldn't say the what was wrong. Uh, so the what of, of a segmentation strategy and a tiering strategy to attract other than just the professional photographers yeah. and a wider audience to, to the brand, I think was correct. Uh, you could discuss the how. Um, so the how was probably we can discuss. I do want to be respectful to the past because uh, people, w I, I should be judged and the team should be judged on what we're going to do in the future. Correct, and I have no, so, no question So about that. Uh, what we are not going to do is that similar approach. So we will bring everything back to go to work. That was one of the actions yep. why the whole R&D, the whole design and the whole management team is back in Sweden. Because the expertise and the core DNA of Hasselblad is made in Sweden. So, and that is the authenticity, and I would say that is then therefore the legitimacy to grow the brand going forward. So we will not see a badged partner product going forward, and we want to build the brand from our own core DNA, and that is built around the optical quality, that is built around the iconic design, the living history, and the Swedish craftsmanship. I think that's well stated, and that's... I think a, a good statement for everybody to hear because I think people, and specifically passionate photographers, yeah. really believe in what we see here. These yeah. these two products, yeah. uh, you know, the the V system is legendary. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, it's just uh, and the V system is an inspiration. I mean, when we talked, when I talk about iconic design, that is iconic design. That's what the language is of Hasselblad. Yes. And then when I talk about segmentation why the watt was okay. I mean, that was a camera not only for the professional photographer, that was certainly also for the passionate and dedicated amateur or semi-professional. And that is, I think, the core DNA where we need to build the brand back from. I, well, I think that's a, an important consideration. I know as a young photographer, you know, I, and this is a strong word, but I had lust for the Hasselblad brand. Yeah. I worked my butt off so I could afford the Hasselblad cameras. And then there was always a stigma that came with that is that yeah. you know, once you had the Hasselblad in your hand, yeah. you've, you reached a, a, another pinnacle of your career as a professional. Yeah. Of course, a lot of things were different back then, yeah. but that whole iconic legacy has, I think, and, and I'm, I'm pretty Absolutely. sure, continued to this yeah. present day. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's where we are building our foundation on. Um, so the direction is absolutely to play a role on the top of the pinnacle, if you may describe it as a pinnacle of a triangle and say, we want to be on the top, we want to be perceived as the best. And the best is then the optical quality and the results. And why that? Because you want to expand the opportunity for the photographers to expand their creativity. You can only expand your creativity if you have the whole field of play available. But then also, if you look at that pinnacle and say, what is underneath there? Because there's still a lot of people that are really taking time and dedicated about photography. Because in a way, that was the V system yes. at the time. And there were 550,000 cameras being sold of the V system over the many years. Yes, the, the and, that's why, and that's why the CFV, our digital back, which I think is one of the best stories. And it's been the most successful product range for us in 2015. What's, when we talk about the pinnacle, we, and many people, if you, if you put the market as a, a, a pyramid or a triangle, and we talk about segmentation in the marketplace with high end, uh, the medium side, and you know, then more or less the, the consumer side of things. Yeah. Let's talk about the medium format 
marketplace now. And you know, at one point you're talking 550,000 cameras. The numbers have changed pretty drastically at this point. Yeah. You know, we're, we've both been in you know this, the marketplace for a while, yeah. medium yeah. format. Yeah. Where do you see medium format market? As, as you reorganize the company, obviously you are looking at a lot of things internally, but you can't make a lot of decisions internally without understanding a little bit about Absolutely. what's on the external. So yeah. well, share with us what your vision, at least in, and, and view, yeah. of the medium format marketplace is at this point. Yeah, the, I think there's been a lot of changes in the market, and you probably know that much better than me. You've been in the market much longer than me. Uh, but we saw, I think we see a lot more players coming in as well. Because, of course, that whole push from the bottom on the compact side that has been taken over by the mobile side is, of course, where people are trading up. Yes. And not only trading up from a consumer level, but especially also driven by the manufacturer level. So Pentax 645 was one of those examples. Uh, so we see more people coming in. I expect, actually, more people to come in from a manufacturer side. Certainly a lot of rumors. Uh, a lot of rumors. We hear the same rumors as you do. You probably know more than we do, uh, but there will be probably more players, partly some for commercial reasons, maybe others for image reasons, uh, from a brand image reasons. So that's one of the things on the ob observations, and then of course how medium format is used, uh, and, and by who. So in certain markets we see absolutely it is a, a smaller, a elite circle say okay that's what I need and that's the tool I need in other markets we see also actually actually consumers trading up into medium format to say well we've done that part the full frame now we want to see what we can do with that medium format we believe in medium format we believe that's the part of Hasselblad and that's been there since the H system and that's where we want to be with the professional photographers so there will be also new medium format cameras going forward for Hasselblad absolutely good I think one of the things that a lot of people don't understand about the medium format marketplace is that it's, I look at it in somewhat th three broad segmentations. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the professional, you've got um, the high-end enthusiast market, and then you have the, the specialized market, the aerial, the uh, in museums, industrial, institutional yeah. kind of things, and it's a lot different than you know the the basic DSLR market. Yeah. And so, when a medium format company looks at at that that segment, you you've got to take into consideration uh, a number of things. Um, there's a lot of people on forums, for example, that say, all right, you know, well, they can only sell X amount of cameras, but you have to understand that there's a whole other segment of the marketplace that many people don't ever hear about. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. uh, I don't know if you, why we call them, let's say, institutional sales, yeah. where high-end, uh, high-quality, image quality is utmost, you know, the, the, the end-all to end-all, and it's yeah. not so much about the price. And then there's the industrial market, the aerial market, for example, yeah. which is getting huge, specifically with all the aerial mapping and so forth. And now Hasselblad's playing a part in all those, is that correct? Absolutely. So we had launched in 2015 our first aerial camera, I mean dedicated aerial camera, which is the A5D. Uh, we felt that that was absolutely needed to go in a way back, I mean, I mean, if, if anybody has legitimacy to be an aerial, if you know, once you've been in the moon, yeah, we should be able to be also in an aerial application. So there will be further development on the aerial side. Of course, we're strong in the institutional side, if you may call that, we are strong in the museum side. We are in New York today, we're here. All the cameras of the, of the Modern Museum of Art here in New York is a Hasselblad. Forbidden City in Beijing is Hasselblad, Rijksmuseum is Hasselblad. So certainly with our multi-shot solution, absolutely important. And then of course you have the professional, like you said, because there's more segmentation than just saying, okay, it's just that professional photographer, there's more to it. And then what we see in Asia actually is, uh, especially, is that dedicated amateur trading up. And another element we saw with our pricing because yes, pricing is, is, is still, there's an element of sensitivity and elasticity when you see we have the H5D, uh, that what we've done at the end of last year with that special price, uh, that really yeah, uh, overpassed our expectations. So we have now the problem of you know, not supplying the demand, uh, which is a good problem to have, uh, but it shows 
that when you hit a certain price point, that there's a much wider audience. Because yes, there's a hesitance maybe to go into the market, but it's also still price driven as well. Yeah, now, now you've set yourself a level there. Hopefully you can meet the demand of, you know, we making will. enough cameras. We will, but, we will, we will. Um, you know, that, yeah. that also signals something about maybe where things have to be moving forward. Yeah. Right now, you, you won't, you, tell me what the, the, the systems are. You have the, the H5 yeah. system, and we, there is a, how many different backs for this at this point? Uh, well, at the moment, we're focused on the 50 the CMOS, 50. the 50. Uh, we still have the 60 CCD. The 40 is coming to an end, uh, and that's, that's the situation. But it's mainly the 50 uh, CMOS sensor. Are you making a back for the V system? We have the CFV, which is also the 50 uh, CMOS. That's been really successful. We believe in this product. We feel a continuation of this product, an optimization of this product going forward. I'm not going to disclose when and what and, no, no. and how, but uh, it's been the most growing uh, segment or category was the CFV digital back. And uh, we had also here adjusted the price because there was, again, this sensitivity and it's been extremely, extremely uh, successful. And why? It was, it, it's a mixture of who's that customer because that was the interesting part. So is it the one, like when you first camera was there, say, no, well, I, I really love to shoot with this camera, cut my waist level, I uh, cut my uh, uh, square, yep. and it, that's certainly a group. But interesting, a lot of younger people are going back to that system and it's sometimes driven by education uh, where some of the professors of film academies and photography academies say to the students, yeah, it's good that you know the technology, but the first thing is you need to learn how to look, you need to learn how to look at composition and looking at that viewfinder on the waist level and looking at that, it gives you another discipline because just taking a picture is more than just taking, uh, pushing a button. And I think we've seen a, a very good uptake uh, on the CFV digital work, and I think it's also an amazing brand story. It, I think, well, first off, it, it's an amazing brand story, but it, what I think always set Hasselblad apart in, in that format was the square. The square, absolutely. And of course, there's always people are asking, have you ever thought of just making a square sensor again? Well, I cannot disclose anything, no. but we are, of course, we heard the same questions, yeah. You need to then study that, because why not? I mean, we listen to the market, so that is very important for us. Uh, but we also need to look then at how is that business working? I mean, how many actually are there and how does the cost relate to business? So, so we absolutely uh, looked at that and we absolutely listened to the customers. I cannot confirm nor deny at this stage. Oh, you're getting to be, I'm a politician, <laughs> right? you're doing a very good job. Yeah. You fit into the American model very well. Okay, but I'm not <laughs> running for president, <laughs> Kevin. Yeah. Well, thank you. You'd probably uh, be, uh, well, let's not uh, get into politics. No, no. <laughs> it's an interesting time as yeah. far as that goes, for sure. I did already my faux pas in New York, so I stopped <laughs> oh, there. really? Yeah. <laughs> we should probably ask about that later on. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, you've got the, the, the V, but this has been, the, and it started with the H1, and you're up to the, the H5 uh, yeah. system at this point. Um, lovely camera and so forth. Um, where do we go from here with this? It's the H5. Will there be an H6? Well, we will uh, have um, a lot of announcements this year. So there will be a lot of announcement, and uh, there will be a further development, of course, of the H system. When we talk about the pinnacle and we talk about the top, that will be a further evolution. I like the word a lot. You had one year of, of putting things uh, in order, and yep. now you've got the, the opportunity to um, have a lot of announcements this year. A lot. And, well, we yeah. don't, uh, we're not going to be talking about any no, major no. announcements. Um, I, uh, I think <coughs> we, I'll make it very clear, yeah, Perry and I have yeah. already discussed getting together a yeah. number of other times when things begin to happen. Yeah. Uh, but. And, and the reason, I, I, I want to be a bit more explicit to that, Kevin. I think what, like what I said before, we can look at the past, we can point fingers, but you know, we need to be judged on that, what we'll deliver in the future. And that's, then it's better than to over deliver and under promise, sure. than over promise and under deliver. And that's kind of the mentality that we also brought inside the company. And that's also where we want to live up to. So 
uh, it was good to it, it is good to catch up. So from a direction point of view, from a yes. strategy point of view, to share our ideas, to be very open on it, the good and the bad. But at the same time, uh, we will be in touch with you, and I hope many times going forward, also to celebrate some of the uh, the celebrations around our 75 years. Excellent. Let's talk a little bit about the the, the financial news that people have been following with Hasselblad. Yeah. Um, at one point, uh, there was a gentleman from Hong Kong named Shiro, yep. who uh, was I, the investor bought into, I think he pretty much owned Hasselblad as far as... Uh, he was the former owner former of Hasselblad, owner. Mark Shiro and the Shiro Group. Right. And then uh, a venture capital firm came into play, correct? And are they the, the present? Uh, they are the majority shareholder, so Ventus Capital. Uh, so Ventus Capital is, uh, is based in, in Dusseldorf. Uh, it's a private equity group. Uh, they have the majority investment now. They had 100% investment before October last year. Yeah. And then DJI came in as a minority investor. Now, that's interesting. I mean, <laughs> when the DJI announcement was made, there was a lot of, um, once again, you yeah. know, this, this, this is an industry full of speculation. And oh, yeah. <laughs> and, it's interesting uh, to follow this, yeah. Well, yeah, it's pretty, it's yeah. like a, a tabloid sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, first off, it's a Chinese company. Yeah, and you know, everybody's familiar with the fact that DJI has been very successful in the, the drone marketplace, yeah. and of course, you know, the uh, last thing everybody starts saying is we're going to start seeing Hasselblads flying around in drones. Yeah. Uh, do you want to explain that relationship at all? Or yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, we are extremely happy to start with because what happened last year, as I mentioned organizational readiness, operational readiness, it was also financial readiness. And uh, actually, although we were uh, working on the minority investment uh, with the fund, with Ventus Capital, uh, DJI in the summer contacted us uh, to be interested to talk to us. So, uh, so it came from their side. Uh, we went to Shenzhen, uh, we met with the team, we met with Frank and the management team. I was really impressed with the team. Uh, not only what they've done, but I think they were extremely strong also about brand, control, uh, a lot of brain power in all the different divisions. And the reason why DJI was interested in us, because, I mean, you always think, so why are you doing this? And, uh, and um, actually, they believed in the brand, the iconography of the brand, the Hasselblad. But moreover, they believed in the strategy. So, like I mentioned before, at the beginning of 2015, with the team, we worked on the strategy. It was, of course, part of the due diligence, and, a, and, and Frank and said that's the right way to go to build the brand back for the core DNA. There is nothing, in a sense, that we have any commitments based on synergies. Yeah, so it's not like say, okay, we buy into you because now we're going to do this. Yep. Completely free. So, uh, if there's opportunities, and of course, we, 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 we are in touch with the different divisions, and we try to grab as much brain power they have and experience they have, build it also in our teams, uh, but there's no plans whatsoever of a joint product. There's no plans definite on any roadmaps uh, going forward. We celebrate it from a marketing communication point of view. We're gonna do shoot Göteborg in uh, next week and there will be kind of a joint event, uh, but it's just celebrating that uh, we have this partnership and, and, and that's the starting point. So we are happy uh, because it's also a partner that uh, leaves us going forward and believes in your strategy. So, and uh, we, we're happy that there is a great partner also from, yeah, a sparing partner and uh, what I call the brain power uh, and, and, and so it's been a really good, uh, good uh, connection. And I go on a regular basis to Shenzhen to meet up, to meet the team and to meet Frank, who's very impressive. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're really happy about that. You know, it's interesting, the, the Asian market, um, and it's, I, I know between all the high-end camera makers, for example, Alpa, who makes just you know, camera bodies and provides the business that they're doing in China, uh, phase one, Leica and of course Hasselblad and the influence. Uh, photography there is um, very interesting. I mean, it's, these, there's there's a, a passion in regards to two things, and I think they kind of run parallel. Mm -hmm. They love the gear, 
Yeah. They really love the gear, yeah. but they also love taking pictures. Yeah. Although some of them don't like to ever get them out of the camera or put them on the computer and do yeah. things with them. Yeah. Uh, but it's a remarkable economy and it's yeah. photography plays such a major role in yeah. regards to what, what they do and how they do things. It's uh, quite That's interesting. So, well, you're so right. I mean, people are very, uh, you know, uh, very important that gear, as you called it. Uh, we have several ambassadors in, 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 in China. I just was in Shanghai last November, together with our partner, Shiro. Mm -hmm. We did a great event, and uh, we work a lot with our ambassadors because there's also enormous group of younger, aspirational photographers that want to learn, that want to know, and we have a good mixture of different photographers, so we did a special with Sales, he's a wedding photographer. We have a, a, a Yang Lin, he's a landscape photographer, and then we have Ming Tin, who's, who's only in her 30s, who's a fashion photographer. Wow. So she did the whole fashion photography. So different subjects where we get dedicated people together and listen to the work and listen to the experience of those ambassadors of us. And we do quite a lot in, uh, in mainland China with them. Yeah, it's, it, I'm just um, fascinated by that whole marketplace over there. Yeah. I've run several workshops there and yeah. I'm just like blown away yeah. by what these guys are yeah. doing and yeah. how much gear they have. I yeah. mean, they, they well, I had one guy that just had one, brought a person along to carry gear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. It's kind yeah. of funny the way yeah. that is. Each lens double. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I always like selling there also. It's like, yeah. okay, I want one, but I have one, two more as gifts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something they, no. they enjoy doing. No, absolutely. When, when we're talking about photographers, let's, let's kind of, I, I want to come back to some of the, the yeah. technologies and the future of the, the marketplace, but yeah. while we're talking about some individual photographers, one of the things that I've always admired about Hasselblad, and I'm happy to see that it's still continuing, absolutely. is uh, the master's program. Yeah. And you know, each year there's these marvelous publications and awards. Yeah. I mean, these are just magnificent books. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about you know, the importance of the masters with Hasselblad and why yeah. that's a continuing tradition. And, yeah. Uh, it doesn't look like it's one that's going away. Absolutely. That is, it became an institution. Uh, the first winner was uh, 2001. Anton Corbijn was the winner of the Masters, the first Masters. Uh, I met with Anton uh, a few weeks ago and uh, because of course it's going to be 75 years. Uh, see what we can do something together. And the 2016 edition, as you know, has just been announced yeah, and the winner's been announced. Uh, it's quite a pleasure to call the winners. It's amazing, the reaction. Uh, it's never been so subscribed as ever before. So we were with 12,000 subscriptions of entries to this competition compared to 4,000 the years before. That's so, an amazing number. So that, that number was, was amazing. We did some additional categories because <coughs> the younger category, so under 21, or also the urban streetwear category, what was important to also have younger photographers to have the opportunity to uh, apply. And so now we have announced them, now they will get their gear and we'll start shooting with the Hasselblad, they're all excited. Oh. And then of course we could announce it in, uh, in Fotokina 2016. But uh, absolutely we see this as, as part of Hasselblad. And it's such a great thing and people take so much pride. Also very well established photographers to be announced to be the masters. Yeah. What, you know, I find very interesting, earlier this week we've been in New York, you've been doing your thing in New yep. York and we've been here doing a number of different things. Yep. And we had the opportunity to uh, visit the School of Visual Arts and uh, we sat down with uh, three graduate students that are running their own operations now. Yep. Um, it was one of the most fascinating hours I've spent. Yep. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to, you know, we both have, um, children roughly the same age and we've yeah. talked about the, the challenges uh, off camera a little bit about you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. raising children and you know we you sort of at our age and it's kind of funny because I, I you know when we were young somebody probably had the same sort of impression yeah. with us is that uh, you know what's this generation doing yeah and I was so impressed by the commitment to projects the dedication to the products but 
they're photographing with medium format. Yeah. So the, the realization of, yeah. you know, not, you know, just getting any old camera or shooting it with this or that, yeah. they were, they were, I asked them, well, let's talk gear. And yeah. medium format was the, the gear. Absolutely. And you're seeing that also with... with Absolutely. And, and, and of course, it's, 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 it is a minority. It's not like now, sure. we, I mean, the mobile phone we cannot deny and we will sh probably will shoot with both because, yeah, yeah. why not? Uh, but I think it's the young generation and, 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 and overall there is also sometimes coming back. I mean, that whole slow trend and taking time. Uh, there are elements in saying, well, I needed that time and I need that quality because that's where I stand for. And I think that is great to see. Uh, and I, it's, it's like, you know, you have, you have fast food or, or you can have something home cooked, right? It's, yep. it's or learn how to really cook it. Or really learn how to cook it. And, and, and that is something that I think that is great to see. And, and we want to encourage that. We have a dedicated position, for example, here in the U.S., just for the schools and just for the education. Uh, so he's really dedicated to be in touch and to give seminars and to give workshops. Uh, and, and the same, the masters is one of the tools to have young people come and join and then give them the experience to shoot. We also, you know, give some rentals to, to the students to try the gear. And I get probably every other week a letter uh, from a young upcoming photographer, help me, help me. Of course, we cannot supply uh, everything and we also have our limitations, but whenever it's possible, we'll try to support it. Yeah, I understand. I don't know if you know this, but um, uh, Luminous Landscape has a, our own nonprofit endowment where we give grants out to photographers and so yeah. forth. And it's really amazing to see some of the projects coming in yeah. from uh, the grant applications and, you know, be able to. Uh, you know, from our other other side of the business, help people. Yeah. You know, find their way in and doing photography that yeah. some of us never had the opportunity yeah. to do. Yeah. How do you find photography? You were you know a complete non-photographer before you uh, got into this. So yeah. the last year has got to be a real um, I will education. Not, I will not be in the masters, uh, no, Kevin. No. Are you stamping no. some images? I mean, my background is you know I'm uh, actually I'm a goldsmith. I mean, I actually really? did an art academy in in in, uh, in Holland and. And uh, so, so there's an element of, uh, yeah, the love for creativity, let's put it this way. Uh, but I wouldn't consider myself as a, as a creator in that sense. So I have a lot of affinity and I am, I would say, a nice snapper, <laughs> but I'm not a professional photographer, no. Well, come on a workshop sometime. I'll be Absolutely. happy to give you, we'll go to some I amazing know. places and take some amazing pictures. I mean, the team in Göteborg has helped me a little bit <laughs> and, uh, and I appreciate it, but I, unfortunately, it's the time, it's probably the same for you, we're so busy, and especially 2015 was an incredibly busy year, we did a lot, uh, so I hope then when things starting to move in the right direction, to take more time for that as well. One of the things that I'm finding is that 2016 starting off to be a heck of a year. Yeah. When yeah. you think, we're not even, we're sitting down, you know, the last week in, in January, Yeah. and just about every camera company has made a major announcement about new products. And yeah. this is a Photokina year. You wonder yeah. where, where things are going to be Photokina time. So yeah. I think there's a huge uh, change in the industry you know, happening right now. It's yeah. kind of going to be fun to see where it goes this year. Absolutely. Um, and for us, it's our 75 years so. uh, as a camera brand and 175 years as a company. So we have some, uh, some celebrations as well. And, um, and not only on the Photokina uh, side. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to that. Let, let's take a minute and talk um, the, the latest trend, megapixels. Yeah, there's a lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting bigger and bigger all the time. Your uh, competitor has recently announced a 100 megapixel system, um, phase one. And they've made a, a very clear point that the chip that they're using is basically open to everybody in the marketplace. So I... It's a I, Sony sensor. It's a yeah. Sony sensor, and I, yeah. I, I think we just want to, you know, so, okay, so is Hasselblad going to be doing something in the 100 megapixel? No, absolutely. I mean, we are certainly looking into that. Uh, so today, if you look at the roadmap of Sony, it's like you said, it's like an open platform. So it's that third category of, so of Sony and sensors where it's open for everybody. Uh, there's three cycles in those sensor roadmaps. So on one side you have the test samples and you have the engineering samples and then you have the qualified production sample. So the qualified production sample is at the latest stage. Uh, we're working, we are in touch with Sony, we have a great relationship and uh, as you said, it's, it's a megapixel race sometimes. 
I'm not so sure that it is always, you know, that is now all that is needed. Uh, we have today our multi-shot uh, solution, our 200 multi-shots on the H5. So if, uh, you know, that specific need, and I'm talking like, for example, the institutional, think about the museums, they have a solution. I mean, that we had already for some years. Uh, so there's not like, oh, we need to have it tomorrow uh, because uh, we have our multi-shot and, and let's do it right. And let's do it with the right quality and, and let's also build not only putting a sensor in a camera but also make the surrounding around it because it's quite a lot of data that, that needs to be captured. So your PCB board, your whole electronic platform needs to be uh, the right way in order to capture them and to use it in the right manner. Right. So but, we, uh, but we absolutely are in touch and we are open uh, to the 100 megapixel as well. In the past, at one point, uh, Hasselblad tightly locked out uh, anybody else from integrating yeah. into their H system. Yeah. Where, where does that stand today? In well, it was a decision many, many years ago uh, that was taken at the time. Um, we are open <laughs> in that sense to, 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 to anything. So whatever uh, the camera and the optical quality can do better, we should be open to anything in that respect. It's not something if you have that decision in the past that this is a closed system that, uh, that, that, uh, that you change that from one day or another. Uh, it's also not the need to change it immediately. If at all it's needed to change. I'm just going to answer it. We're going to be open to any kind of opportunities to make a better product. And that's what we should be open to it. Uh, that was a decision, I think it was in 2001. Yeah, very far back at this far point. Back, so. And uh, certain things that it is closed and that it is yours is key because otherwise, you know, yeah. that's what you own and that's part of your IP. Think about our lenses and the shutter inside, and you know that's a, that's a great element to have, because it's not just a sensor that makes the quality, but as you know, yep. it's the combination of the elements that makes it. And uh, certain things you need to own, I would say, and keep that closed. Uh, on the other side, uh, why not share certain things that you can do even better? Excellent. Yeah. I really want to say thanks for you know, sitting. I think this is a, a major opportunity for Luminous Landscape and Hasselblad. Yeah. It's nice to, to get the door open again and yeah. uh, to see the products, uh, to get a chance to sit with you and, and actually begin to understand some of your vision and some of your challenges. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's encouraging and and actually I feel good about that. There's no I haven't, there's no negativity coming. There's yeah. only possibility. Absolutely, and and, and we've, what we see as well, there's still an enormous goodwill to the brand. Uh, a lot of people want us to be very successful. They respect what we've been doing in the past and what we're doing today. Uh, of course, certain executions of the past, uh, you might say scratch something uh, at the same time. Uh, it also made a lot of people happy, uh, but we have a direction. Start building the brand from the core, try to be the best, give the best gear to the creators uh, to uh, expand their uh, creativity, and at the same time move forward building down and also to look at a wider segmentation of consumer base. Fabulous. Well. Perry, thank you very, very much. Thank I appreciate you, the opportunity. Thank you. I can't wait to get together with you again. I can't wait to come to Sweden and uh, continue the, the story. Perfect. I think we've addressed the past. I mean, everything from here on forward should be yeah. present and, and, and future. And I, I look forward to the, the new story that's being written right now. And uh, looking forward to digging into the Masters uh, uh, winners this year. Perfect. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. It's been a marvelous conversation. And I look forward to moving ahead in the future. And for all our viewers, thanks for watching. The story will continue, and I'll see you on the Luminous Landscape.